I've got your energy stories for this, the first week of September 2023. And in the first half of this year, global wind turbine orders hit 70 gigawatts, according to Wood Mackenzie, a 12% increase year over year. China, as usual, was responsible for the lion's share with 44 gigawatts, while North American orders notched 7.7 gigawatts, up four times over the first half of last year. Two offshore orders accounted for 49% of the total. Offshore wind has seen some major bumps, though. Massachusetts just opened its fourth offshore solicitation at a record 3.6 gigawatts, with bids due by the end of January 2024 and projects to be selected by that June. At the same time, two projects from Massachusetts' previous solicitations have been canceled owing to a major shift in the macroeconomic environment, with 2,400 megawatts, 2.4 gigawatts, of projects canceled and developers paying a total of $108 million to exit contractual commitments. Meanwhile, things in New York are also looking somewhat grim, with offshore developers there seeking an average 48% increase in contract prices to an average of $167 per megawatt hour. Developer Orsted just announced a possible $2.3 billion impairment to earnings based on the exposure of its U.S. offshore portfolio to increased costs. And furthermore, the much-heralded wind lease auction in the Gulf of Mexico was a bust, with a single winning bid of $5.6 million from RWE for acreage off Louisiana and two lease areas off of Texas receiving zero interest. In the world of electric vehicles, Hyundai and LG Energy Solutions announced plans to invest an additional $2 billion in manufacturing batteries at Hyundai's Georgia EV plant, bringing total investment there to $7.5 billion. Today, Hyundai or Kia vehicles are not eligible for the domestic tax credit, but this will change that. In order to help U.S. automakers convert existing factories to compete in the electric vehicle revolution, the Biden administration will offer $15.5 billion. That's important because many existing auto plants that need to be converted sit in the unionized rust belt, while the newer sites are often in the right-to-work southeastern states. The big three have blamed job cuts and factory downtime to date on the energy transition, and a potential worker strike is looming in the near future. Some interesting news in clean tech, the Defense Logistics Energy Agency, on behalf of the U.S. Air Force and U.S. Department of Defense, designated Oklo as the pending contract awardee to design, construct, own, and operate a microreactor at Alaska's Ailson Air Force Base in a long-term power purchase agreement. This award is an element of the Air Force's micro-reactor pilot program. Oklahoma still needs a license from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, but it has obtained a site-use permit from the U.S. Department of Energy, as well as fuel material from Idaho National Labs. Arizona's publicly-owned utility Salt River Project and long-duration non-lithium-ion energy storage system company CM Blue Energy announced a pilot for a 5-megawatt, 50-megawatt-hour project to be built near Phoenix. CM Blue will build, own, and operate the battery storage project that will employ a mixture of solid electrolytes and water-based electrolytes, with the project due to come online by December of 2025. CM Blue is an interesting recent entry to the storage game, with announced battery developments in Austria and a pilot with Milwaukee's WEC Energy. Singapore's Bila Solar will open a 1 gigawatt solar module manufacturing plant in Indianapolis. This tech is somewhat unique because its lightweight module is flexible and can be employed in locations where modules typically cannot be installed, like low load-bearing commercial or industrial roofs, waterproof membrane roofs, and curved surfaces. And finally, Redwood Materials just scored yet another billion dollars, this time in a Series D round to be used for further capacity expansions of its battery recycling facility. Redwood has raised almost $2 billion to date, while also scoring a $2 billion loan from the DOE. So the circular economy and lithium-ion batteries is starting to really move forward. Well, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next week.